What is up guys? This is Luke Hill for KitGuru and we continue to be somewhat amazed by just how many features that all-in-one liquid cooling manufacturers can squeeze into their products. In a world where RGB fans and pump covers are commonplace now, the next trend seems to be LCD covers. And yes, these have been around for a while, but they seem to be growing in popularity. So, LCD screens, if you like those, then I guess check out these two. So here we've got the Thermaltake Tough Liquid Ultra 360, that has a 2.1 inch display, and we've got the Corsair H150i Elite LCD, which also has a 2.1 inch display. We're going to see how these pair perform, see if there are any compromises with the screen on there, or if you just get solid performance, plus the screen with some extra cost of course. So. Let's take a closer look. Before we do that though, if you like what we do here at Kikuru, give us a like and subscribe, support the channel on YouTube, check us out on our main website, kikuru.net. Let's get back into it. Starting out with the Corsair H150i Elite LCD. This is a roughly 250 pound, 360 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler with a 2.1 inch display on the plump block unit. Three 120 millimeter ML RGB Elite Series fans drive airflow through the unit. These PWM controlled fans operate at up to 2000 RPM according to our testing and their speed range of 450 to 2000 RPM as well as 0 RPM compatibility is fantastic for creating low noise operation when preferred. Lighting for the fans is handled by an array of LEDs that shine brightly through the translucent blades and look very eye catching. Controlling the fans is the bundled Corsair IQ Commander Core Unit. This can control up to 6 individual fans in terms of speed and RGB lighting. And the cable connections for this unit are vast, but they're not intrusive or biased to the front side of our build, like we see from some competing coolers, so they don't make the system look untidy, and that is a strong positive. Corsair uses a conventional 27mm thick black aluminium radiator as the foundation for its liquid cooling unit. This is backed by 380mm long low permeation rubber tubes that are sleeved black and have very good flexibility. The 56 by 56 mm copper cold plate supports all modern sockets including LGA 1700 and Threadripper. Within the chunky pump block unit is housed the speed adjustable pump that we saw topping out at around 2700 to 2800 RPM. The 2.1 inch IPS screen clips onto the underlying pump unit for a seamless integration. Resolution is 480 by 480 natively with a 30 hertz refresh rate. And brightness is rated up to 600 nits, which is actually very solid indeed. Corsair rounds the glossy display with an LED ring that is also controllable through IQ. In fact, the entire cooler and all of its hardware actually features excellent control through Corsair's vast IQ ecosystem. The image or GIF on the 2.1 inch IPS screen can be adjusted and messed with. The RGB lighting border can be controlled and synchronization with the LEDs on the fans is superb. There's also ample speed control and the ability to set several profiles. Even if it is resource heavy, I think that IQ is absolutely fantastic, especially if you have multiple pieces of Corsair hardware that you want to synchronize together. Corsair really does have an upper hand over many of the competitors in this marketplace, in my opinion. And as is typical for Corsair liquid coolers, you get a five year warranty for the H150i Elite LCD. Installation is incredibly easy on AM4 and it's very quick. You install a few posts onto the default AMD backplate and then screw the block into place. Cable management is also fine given Corsair's smart approach for biasing cables towards the rear side of the chassis where they're hidden. And then IQ can take care of the rest of the job for setting up and managing the cooler itself, including updating the firmware if you need to do that. Thermaltake's Tough Liquid Ultra 360 is a 360mm all-in-one liquid cooler with also a 2.1 inch display on the pump block unit. This retails at £265 officially it seems, but it's currently available for about £240 at scan at the time of writing. And it only seems to be scan that has pretty good UK stock from the big UK retailers that is. Three of Thermaltake's Tough Fan 12 turbo fans handle airflow. These 120mm blowers are rated at 500 to 2500 RPM, which is a very good speed range indeed, especially with that top end speed. And they are controlled by a standard 4 pin PWM connection to a motherboard header. So noise adjustment ability should be good, especially when coupled with the anti-vibration rubber mounting pads. Interestingly though, for the 2021 market, the fans do not feature any form of RGB LED lighting on them. This feels like an odd design choice when an LCD display on the pump unit is usually an upgrade that comes after RGB lighting and the other components of the all-in-one liquid cooler. I'm struggling to see the logic in this one personally, but if you don't care for RGB lighting but still want the functionality of an LCD display, then let me know in the comment section down below. 
As we would expect, Thermaltake uses the standard 27mm thick black aluminium radiator. The 400mm rubber tubes are sleeved black to improve their appearance and reduce the likelihood of evaporation of the fluid inside, though they do seem less flexible than some of the other 360mm all-in-ones we have used recently, notably the Corsair unit itself and a 360mm all-in-one from Sapphire also. Thankfully, entry point into the pump block unit is adjustable for some enhanced flexibility. Just like Corsair, Thermaltech also uses a well-sized copper cold plate that will suffice for even large heat spreader applications, though the official specification page does not highlight support for the biggest of them all, Threadripper that is, so that's a bit of an interesting one to be perfectly honest. A once again very chunky case in houses, the 3200 RPM pump. A three pin fan cable is used to provide power to the pump, and this indicates that it is a DC unit with limited speed control abilities versus PWM. The 2.1 inch TFT LCD display features a 480 by 480 resolution, just like the Corsair competitor. Thermaltake's connection approach is via a micro USB cable that splits out into an internal USB 2.0 header. That's absolutely fine, as Thermaltake also does a good job of minimizing the quantity of messy cables around the front side of a build. The LCD screen can be manually rotated to align with the orientation inside one's chassis. This is a basic but perfectly functional approach in my opinion. Controlled through the TT Plus RGB 2.0 software, a pretty decent amount of information can actually be put onto the screen of that LCD display. You can get uh, fan speeds, CPU temperatures, CPU or GPU load, although the CPU load didn't really work properly in our case, it was just glued at 98%, and then you can get liquid temperatures. So you can put a good amount of information on there. Or if you just want to do some trolling or set it for the lulls, I guess, then you can put a JPEG or a GIF on there. Yes, I said GIF. I would definitely say that Corsair's IQ system is undeniably sleeker, not only in operation, but in how things are actually displayed on the pump and the flexibility you get with the LCD display on the pump. But Thermaltake does do a good job at handling the duties that people actually want, so temperatures and frequencies and some form of visual indication of how your system's actually running, I guess. Warranty for Thermaltake's unit is two years according to SCAN, and I cannot find any other major retailers with stock in the UK. Two years is incredibly disappointing for a £240 plus all-in-one liquid cooler, especially when the Corsair competitor offers five years, and most of the other competitors from the big brands such as NZXT for example, will be offering far superior to two years. We criticised Sapphire recently for a two-year warranty on their 360 all-in-one, and we're going to criticise Thermaltake here if two years is indeed the case, which it seems to be from SCAN at least. Installation on AM4 for Thermaltake's unit is one of the most frustrating processes that I've ever managed for any CPU cooler, air heat sinks included. And to be perfectly blunt, I have no idea why Thermaltake made the process so complicated and long-winded. It's really not a tough job as we see from Corsair or Acetec or Fractal. You don't have to make it difficult when you're installing a liquid cooler on AM4, but Thermaltake somehow has managed to make it incredibly difficult. A custom backplate with a rubber damper is balanced in position without any form of sufficient retention. A user then needs to position four plastic spacers on the posts from the unsecure backplate and just hope that it doesn't fall off. While these spacers do have some form of compression on the metal post sticking out, it's not very strong. Not very strong at all. Then the block is positioned on those spacers before being screwed down. A wrong move in one position or a little too much force in another direction and the backplate comes crashing off. And it crashes off whilst taking the screws or plastic spacers with it, or throwing them into other components such as our graphics card shroud, for example. Put simply, the process requires more than two hands to become straightforward, so that's not really feasible for most people in most situations, unless you've got a helper at hand, of course. And I'll be perfectly honest in saying that I've long thought that Be Quiet has the most frustrating and overly complicated installation process for any CPU coolers on the market. However, I would argue that at this point, especially being an all-in-one liquid cooler, which should be straightforward to install from the block perspective. I think Thermaltake has taken the non-victory there, to be perfectly honest. I just don't know why they need to make the process so long-winded and complicated. But at least the unit looks good when it's fully installed. For testing these liquid coolers, we're using our usual go-to AM4 platform. This is running a Ryzen 9 5950X processor overclocked to 4.45 GHz using 1.312 volts in the BIOS. 
and that's about 1.3 volts delivered in the operating system under load, which is about 220 watts of package power and over 300 watts of wall power for the system. So certainly a pretty hefty load, even for 360 all-in-ones. The motherboard is a Gigabyte B550 Aorus Master with its superb VRM implementation. We've got a Seasonic TX1000 1 kilowatt power supply for accurate read-ins and clean power. We use a 32 gig kit of Corsair Vengeance LPX DDR4 memory. Gigabyte's RTX 2060 Super in zero decibel mode serves graphics output. And we're running this all in a Fractal Meshify 2 chassis with its default two intake fans, 140mm, 1000 RPM, and its one remaining exhaust fan, which is also 140mm, 1000 RPM. For testing, we use a 30-minute loop run of Cinebench R23 all-core load-in, and then we look at the steady state temperature at the end of that 30-minute run. Ambient temperature is maintained realistically around about 22 to 24 degrees, and where we vary outside of that two degree segment, then we will add additional repeated runs just to ensure validity of the data. As always, if you want more details on our test hardware and our procedure, and also some of the details from the previous data that we've gathered for the coolers in the chart, check out those videos and also check out the written webpage on kickguru.net. Let's jump into the testing. Let's start off with noise performance at 100% fan speed. This is an important metric for finding out where we should expect each cooler to sit based on whether it's just blasting its way to the top of the charts with high speed noisy fans. Noise performance on both units falls roughly where we would expect for a triple fan all-in-one liquid cooler. 50 dBA recorded level is certainly loud and noticeable but it is not painfully so. And of course both units feature good PWM speed control ranges for the fans in order to tune a custom curve that is more palatable. Thermaltech actually looks to be doing a solid job here given the very high 2500 RPM speed rating of its fans, but we'll have to see how that plays out in terms of performance levels. Loud, yes, but high performance too. Both the Corsair and Thermaltake 360mm all-in-ones managed to match the Acetec-based Sapphire cooler that we recently reviewed for top spot in our chart, handling around 220 watts of Ryzen 9 5950X package power for a sub 60 degrees Celsius delta read and is impressive. Thus far, there really is very little to distinguish between the pair of 360mm screen equipped all-in-ones, so let's take a look at some noise normalized testing. We adjust each cooler's fan speed until our 40 dBA noise output target is reached. For the Corsair H150i Elite LCD, this resulted in a fan duty cycle of 55%, which translated into roughly 1270 RPM operating speed according to IQ. The pump was maintained at its high speed level under the IQ Extreme speed profile. Thermaltake's Tough Liquid Ultra 360 fared well in this test, with its fans managing to run at 62% duty cycle for 40 dBA noise output. This translated into around 1470 RPM operating speed according to the UEFI and monitoring software. We also maintained pump speed at 100% or 3200 RPM for Thermaltake's unit. Let's see how the demanding overclock thermal stress test differs with all of the coolers locked at 40 dBA noise output on their fans. Thanks to the thermal take unit's ability to maintain slightly more of its fans duty cycle, we see a top of the chart result from the Tough Liquid Ultra 360. Here, the Corsair unit is marginally behind in terms of cooling potential, though it still manages to beat out the other 360mm all-in-ones in our test hierarchy. Thermal take's result here is impressive, and it gives an indication as to the quality of the Tough Fan 12 turbo fans used on the unit. Next up is the Precision Boost Overdrive set of results. Firstly, it's critical to note that the small differences between the displayed delta temperature are not as important for our PBO testing because the clock speed and cooling power achieved are more important metrics. Now that we're back at full fan speed testing, we see the chart positions between Corsair and Thermaltake flip back to the H150i Elite LCD in the lead ever so slightly. In reality, there is little to distinguish between the two 360mm screen equipped coolers here. Both units manage 226 watts of Ryzen 9 CPU cooling power, and both see the chip running at a little over 4.4 GHz average. Of course, the elephant in the room here is that the significantly cheaper 360mm all-in-ones also offer roughly the same performance as Corsair's and Thermaltake's premium and costly units, but this is a known entity given the significant cost associated with the 2.1 inch pump mounted screen. And rounding out with the VRM temperature data, Thermaltake does better here, and that is primarily due to its higher speed fans in the vicinity of our motherboard's VRM heatsink. 
Corsair's incidental VRM cooling results are uninspiring at full speed, but are comparably mediocre for the 40 dBA comparison. Neither of these 360mm units can come anywhere near the 60mm VRM fan equipped Asus ROG Ryogen 2 360 in terms of VRM cooling capability. And that 360mm all-in-one from Asus is actually a valid competitor given its similar price point and inclusion of a 3.5 inch OLED display. So there we have our look at a couple of high-end 360mm all-in-one liquid coolers with 2.1 inch displays from big manufacturers. While this newfangled feature may seem like a gimmick to some users, it actually can be used to display useful information such as fan speeds or temperatures, as we saw from both coolers in our testing. Or you can just stick a GIF or a JPEG on there for even better customization if you really want to do that or if you want to troll your friends one evening. Effectively, what I'm saying here is that I think an LCD screen on a liquid cooler in a clearly accessible position where you can see the information is actually a really cool and useful addition. And I don't really think it's a gimmick, personally. Some can argue that RGB is pointless, some will like it, but I actually think a screen with some valid information on there is quite a cool feature to add. But if you disagree with me, let me know in the comments section down below. And looking at the two coolers individually, both offered stellar performance that we would expect from a 3x120mm all-in-one unit. There really was very little to separate the cooler numbers from both units, so much so that we'd be happy to say they both perform roughly the same. And even with the Thermaltake coolers fans running at significantly higher 2500 RPM versus Corsair's 2000 RPM, noise output was also comparable. As far as the overall package goes, I think Corsair's roughly £250 H150i Elite LCD is the clear victor of the two. IQ is simply superb when it comes to fan and lighting control. It really is a fantastic ecosystem at this point that is relatively unmatched from most competitors. And I think the Corsair's greater inclusion of RGB lighting makes sense on a premium all-in-one that already has the perhaps superfluous 2.1 inch IPS screen added onto it. But of course that depends on your opinion on the screen. Plus the quality touches like simple installation and a very strong warranty go in Corsair's favour. Performance wise though, the roughly 240 to 265 pound Thermaltake Tough Liquid Ultra 360 does a stellar job with its cooling numbers though. So if you're less appealed by RGB fans and Corsair's IQ ecosystem, it could be worthy of consideration. Though we must say that tough competition to that tune does come from the also non-RGB ASUS ROG Ryogen 2 360. That cooler is a 360mm all-in-one liquid cooler. It uses Noctua based fans. It has a bigger OLED display. And yes, it does cost more, but not significantly more. So that is quite a tough competitor for the Thermaltake cooler. Not so much for the Corsair cooler, because obviously Corsair has the RGB fans. So not really a direct competitor there. Now I think we can sign off by saying that we're not going to take away from the fact that both of these coolers are incredibly, perhaps excessively, expensive for 360mm all-in-one liquid coolers. But if you do want a screen on your pump block unit, there is a significant price to pay, as we've seen from previous coolers from the likes of NZXT and Asus, for example. So what do you think of display-equipped liquid coolers? Are these one for you, or would you just save your money and go with a cheaper 360 and just focus on the raw thermal numbers instead? Let us know what you think. I've been Luke Hill for Kicker. Thank you for watching our video review of the Thermaltake Tough Liquid Ultra 360 and the Corsair H150i Elite LCD. As always, sound off in the comment section down below. If you like this video, then help us out on the YouTube channel by subscribing, giving us a like, of course. Check out the main written page on the kickguru.net website. That really helps us out. And interact with us on Discord, Twitter, uh, Patreon, and buy a cool t-shirt if you want. I'll see you next time.